When you uh, think about OPEC, do you think that it is an effective cartel anymore, or has it lost its teeth? I think OPEC has changed a lot over time. Everyone remembers the embargo, or at least those of us that are old enough, uh, re remembers those times from, from 30 or 40 years ago. But OPEC has changed a lot over time, and they haven't behaved like a cartel for a long time, actually. And Saudi Arabia recognizes that. Saudi Arabia has learned from their experience that they were the de facto OPEC in terms of uh, having surplus capacity and managing that surplus capacity. Uh, virtually every other OPEC country has been producing all that they can. And so uh, Saudi Arabia has just reached the conclusion that as market share of OPEC went from 50% 30 or 40 years ago down to a third, that there are other players in the market today and they can't manage the supply alone. I mean, remember, Saudi Arabia is about 10 million barrels a day in a 96 million barrel a day market. They're, they're not the only uh, source of supply out there. So should we call OPEC uh, dead and dusted? Well, I wouldn't say, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it that because you, you never know what might, uh, what might come going forward. But uh, I, don't, I don't expect them to act like a traditional cartel and significantly withhold So what would be supply. the right framework for us to think about OPEC then? If it's not a traditional cartel, it's a loose group of frenemies who <laughs> get together occasionally and... It's, it's countries that have some uh, common a common natural resource, and uh, having dialogue around that resource is something uh, that they have an interest in uh, making sure that they have some degree of alignment right. uh, so that they uh, can, to a degree, influence the direction of, of prices and, and policy, right. but uh, I, I just don't expect it to act like a cartel. Okay, so you know, the first tankers uh, left the U.S. exporting oil. Why isn't the U.S. part of OPEC? Well, uh, we have antitrust laws. Uh, we, have, we have antitrust laws in this country to, to start with. Uh, th so there's a rich history of that. So we, all, we, we compete out there, and we're competing with lots of producers from right. around the world, but we don't, we don't engage in that kind of behavior. We're, you an, know, we're you an exporter know, you know, now. You know that. We're an exporter now. Um, um, we are. Yeah. It, it, it's a good thing. Uh, you, the U.S. is still a net importer of oil, but what's happened with hydraulic fracturing is the oil that we're, we're producing is lighter. And so it's not a good fit for the refineries, uh, the coastal refineries we built in this country, which were geared toward heavier Middle Eastern oil. And so it's really just an efficiency argument that uh, the U.S. will import this heavier grade of oil and export the lighter oil.